Missiles cases in the Philippines climbed to more than 4,000 with 70 deaths since January, according to the Department of Health. The Commission on Elections makes last-minute reminder to put down illegal campaign materials before the official campaign period for the national candidate starts. Malacanang assures public that no government funds will be utilized for President Rodrigo Duterte's endorsement of candidates in the upcoming midterm polls. Good evening. The Department of Health steps up its monitoring amid widening uh, missiles outbreak in the country. Health officials also continue to appeal to parents to get their children vaccinated. My Bermudas explains why. Shona Palin was worried when she heard that there is a missiles outbreak in some parts of the country. That is why she brought her nine-month-old baby to a health center in Payatas, Quezon City to have her infant immunized. Since January 1 to February 9, 2019, more than 4,300 missiles cases have been recorded nationwide with 70 deaths, according to the Department of health. In the National Capital Region, there were 1,296 cases with 18 deaths, followed by Calabar Zone with 1,086 with 25 deaths. Central Luzon recorded 481 cases, while Western Visayas and Northern Mindanao reported 212 and 189 cases respectively. Most of the individuals infected with the contagious disease are children aged 1 to 4 years old. The outbreak of the disease in areas across the country was a result of different factors, such as the low immunization rate in the last five years, which was aggravated in 2018 by parents' fear of vaccine side effects following the Dengvaxia controversy. But Health Secretary Francisco Duque III noted a slight change in the view of some Filipino parents on government's immunization program since the declaration of measles outbreak. Yung aking pong pagpasyal sa Baseco compound, halimbawa, ay uh, mahigit limang daan ang mga uh, bata na nakapagpabakuna sa barangay Panso, sa Manila yung sa barangay Panso sa Quezon City. Despite this, health officials still continue to urge parents to get their children vaccinated to protect them from diseases. Duque also stressed that only infants aged 9 months old and above should be inoculated with anti-measles and not babies who were 1 to 5 months old as recommended by health experts. This should be followed by a booster when babies reach 12 to 15 months. Yes, kasi mura pa yung kanilang immune system. No? At pangalawa, meron kasi uh, mga maraming pag-aaral na lumalabas. Meron silang natural uh, immunity, not really immunity, but a protect, protection, yung immunoglobulin uh, uh, IgG from the maternal uh, circulation pupunta sa bata as a uh, protective uh, antibody. Yun lang, yun lang ang solution natin. Isolation lang talaga kung meron na. And let the body uh, take care of its own. The health department assures that the country has enough vaccine supply as it steps up its monitoring and immunization campaign. My Bermudez, UNTV News and Rescue, Quezon City. Agriculture Secretary Emmanuel Piñol has ordered a temporary ban on pork and other pork products coming from Japan. In a statement issued on Sunday, Pinyol said he had alerted the Bureau of Animal Industry to immediately impose a ban on the entry of pork and other pork products from Japan following reports of African swine flu in that country. Pinyol cited an article from the Japan News which reported seven confirmed cases of ASF in Japan from October of 2018 to January 2019. He also directed all quarantine officers assigned in all of the ports of entry to implement the ban immediately. The agriculture chief also advised quarantine officers to review their quarantine protocols, which includes the installation of food bats at the ports of entry and the monitoring of all meat products being brought into the country by tourists.
Malacanang assures the public that no government fund will be used for President Duterte's endorsement of candidates in the 2019 midterm elections. Rosalie Cos explains why. There's no finality yet on whether the administration would release an official list of names on its slate for the 2019 midterm elections and when. However, President Rodrigo Duterte is expected to endorse his personal choice of candidates as the campaign period kicks off tomorrow. With this, Malacanang ensures the public that there will be no public funds to be used in President Duterte's endorsement of his senatorial bets. But the president will never use any government resource in support or against any candidate. Strict to sit on. Secretary Panelo added that the president will also continue to endorse his preferred candidates during the campaign period. This include former Special Assistant to the President Bongo, Francis Tolentino, and former PNP and Bucor Chief Ronald Bato de la Rosa. The president under the law can campaign for or against candidate by reason of the provision under the law that political or officials by reason of their political offices can campaign. The rest, all employees of the government, AFP, police, cannot campaign for or against any candidate, nor can they use any resource of the government. The chief executive is also expected to endorse controversial personalities such as former Senator Jingoy Estrada, who is facing several cases on pork barrel scam, and Ilocos Norte Governor Aimee Marcos, who is being questioned on the alleged multi-billion ill-gotten wealth of her family. The palace insists Jingoy is not yet convicted and was even allowed by the court to post bail, while Aimee is not facing any charges on issues being thrown against her. The palace also believes that the president's support to these candidates will not affect his image, especially his anti-corruption campaign. The survey will tell you that the president has made many perceived to be unpopular decisions and yet, the survey remains very high. In other words, Filipino people, Filipino people trust this man. They're confident and believe in his judgment. Rosa Licoso, UNTV News and Rescue, Philippines. The Commission on Elections reminds candidates to remove illegal campaign materials within the last 72 hours before the official campaign period starts. The campaign period for the national candidates will start on February 12 or tomorrow and March 29 for candidates for the local positions. The poll body says that once campaign period begins, all campaign posters and tarpaulins should follow the proper size of 2 feet by 3 feet and should be placed in common poster areas designated by the agency. Otherwise, concerned candidates will be charged of election offense and will be penalized under the Omnibus Election Code. The Comelec began conducting its Aplan Baklas on Monday, together with personnel from the Metropolitan Manila Development Authority and Department of Public Works and Highways, which aims to remove all illegal campaign materials. Former Philippine National Police Chief Ronald Bato de la Rosa is looking to push for measures that will maintain law and order if he gets elected to the Senate in the midterm elections. Rosalie Cos tells us why. Retired Police General Ronald De La Rosa said that law and order remains his top priority even as a private individual. Now that he is trying his luck in re-entering government service, the former chief of the Philippine National Police said in an interview in the program Get It Straight with Daniel Razon that he wants to propose measures that will maintain law and order in the country as this is one way of boosting the country's economy and improving the lives of Filipinos. I to top of day na law and order because alam natin. Yung ekonomiya will follow. Pag maganda yung peace and order ng isang bansa, bansa susunod yung investment niyan. Dahil magkakaroon ng confidence yung mga investor, papasok yung mga foreign direct investment or yung local investors, mag-invest sila na pera dahil confident sila. So may, kung may investment, merong employment. Pag may 
employment, merong income ang tao. Pag may income, may makakain sa kanya-kanyang pamamahay. So, gaganda ang buhay ng tao pag may laman ang dyan. As the former top law enforcer in the country, De La Rosa said he is in favor of lowering the criminal age of responsibility from 15 to 12 years old. However, he suggests that the government should provide more rehabilitation facilities for juvenile delinquents. He will also push for the revival of the Mandatory Reserve Officer Training Course or ROTC. To further intensify national security, he will propose the registration of subscriber identification module or SIM cards and regulate its distribution as a way to counter terrorism. He also promised to campaign against loose firearms across the country. Meanwhile, General Bato said he feels sorry for the deaths caused by the government's war on drugs under his leadership of the PNP. Nevertheless, he feels relieved every time there are people who thanked him for the reform and improvements since the launch of the Duterte administration's campaign against illegal drugs. May lalapit sa'yo at yayakap pa, sir. Maraming salamat sa ginagawa ninyo. Uh, malaki na po pagkakaiba ngayon. Noong takot-takot kami, ngayon hindi na kami takot. Baligtad na. Noong nagtatago kami sa loob ng bahay, ayon may lumabas sa kalsada. Ngayon, baligtad na. Kami lang nasa kalsada. Yung mga adik na ang nagtatago sa bahay dahil makapakita ng polis. Mm. So, parang mga ganun. So, very, very fulfilling. Mm. Uh, napalapit ko yung polis sa taong bayan. Rosa Licoz, UNTV News and Rescue, Philippines. Who are the candidates that you will vote for in the 2019 midterm elections? If you are still unsure of who to vote for, well, here are some ways to know who are the best candidates deserving of our precious votes. Monoxon tells us in the details in this special report. Two more months and Filipinos will once again choose who will sit in the Congress and in local positions in the country for the next three years. The midterm polls is set on May 13, 2019. And whoever wins in the elections will take office beginning June 30, 2019. But do we already know who are the candidates that deserve our votes? Good thing, there are tools available to help the public decide which names to write in their ballots. Using a mobile phone, Android users may download the application called Pilipinas 2019 Know Your Candidate. Pilipinas 2019 is a mobile application that contains a list of candidates for the 2019 midterm elections. Through the app, one can search for a particular candidate, either by position or by location. The candidates' political statements, platforms, accomplishments, education, and career backgrounds are also available in the app. There is also a tab through which a user of the app can read fresh election-related news. But the app builder says it is still on its development stage, and updates will be done before the day of the elections. Aside from this mobile app, the public may also visit the Comelec website for a complete list of candidates. It is also advisable to know the background of a candidate to avoid regrets. This can be done by watching news, searching for information in the internet, and asking for details about the candidates. But be careful for there are a lot of paid political advertisements everywhere. To know more about the political platforms and plans of several candidates in the 2019 election, watch the aired episodes of UNTV program Get It Straight with Daniel Razon via untvweb.com. Mon Hoxon, UNTV News and Rescue. Country artist Casey Musgraves won Album of the Year for Golden Hour, while This is America by Childish Gambino won both Record and Song of the Year at the 61st Grammy Awards on Sunday. Gambino searing This is America about police brutality and racism became the first hip-hop track to win Record and Song of the Year Grammys, while three trophies. This is America also took Grammys for Best Music Video and Best Rap Performance. This year's Grammy winners were British pop singer Dua Lipa, who was named Best New Artist, and popular rapper Cardi B, who won her first Grammy, taking Best Rap Album for Invasion of Privacy. 
Costume romp, the favorite, was the biggest winner at the BAFTAs on Sunday, taking seven awards. The period drama in which Olivia Colman stars as Britain's 18th century Queen Anne won outstanding British film. Original screenplay, production design, costume design, and makeup and hair. Coleman, who portrays the monarch as frail and tempestuous, won the leading actress category, a victory that had been expected by many. Her co-star Rachel Wise cooked the supporting actress prize, an award for which fellow the favorite star Emma Stone was also nominated. Meanwhile, Rami Malek took the leading actor prize for his portrayal of late Queen frontman Freddie Mercury in The Bohemian Rhapsody while Netflix black and white movie Roma pick up the Best Film and Best Director Prize. Up next on Y News. Active policemen and soldiers to get 20% bus fare discount. And oil companies to impose fuel price hike this week. Thank you for keeping me company in the first part of One News. More reasons behind the stories with Angelo Castro III and William Theo after this quick break. I'm Rina Villamore Camera. Good evening. To Y News, we pick up from where Rina Villamore Camera left off. I'm Angelo Diego Castro III, and here are the headlines. Active policemen, soldiers, and Coast Guard personnel now entitled for a 20% discount on bus fares. Foreign nationals who sojourn in this country should always behave. Otherwise, they're subject to loss and deportation. Malacanang calls on foreign nationals to obey laws when visiting the Philippines following a viral incident involving a female Chinese national. Senator Panfilo Lacson vows to scrutinize the alleged insertions in a 2019 national budget allotted for infrastructure projects. And AFB Cavaliers head to the UNTV Cup Season 7 Finals after routing the NHA Builders. All active members of the Armed Forces of the Philippines, Philippine National Police and Philippine Coast Guard will very soon be enjoying fair discounts in all public utility buses. Joanna Nano tells us why. Apart from students, senior citizens, and persons with disability, all active members of the Armed Forces of the Philippines, the Philippine National Police, and the Philippine Coast Guard will now get a 20% fare discount in all public utility buses. This after a memorandum of understanding was signed by the officials of the Department of Transportation, the Land Transportation Franchising and Regulatory Board, and various bus operators agreeing to provide fair discounts to all uniformed personnel. LTFRB Chairman Martin Dalgras said that this is in accordance with the order of President Rodrigo Duterte that aims to honor the heroism and sacrifices of the military, policemen, and Coast Guard for the country. But as of now, the 20% fare discount is only applicable in all city and provincial buses, as the LTFRB is still currently negotiating with other transport operators. But according to some PUV conductors that UNTV News and Rescue interviewed, they have not been charging fares on uniform personnel, which has been their practice for a long time now. Pag maka uniform eh, uh, uh, automatic na yung dinamin siya nito. Pero pag baka civilian, may mga ibang pulita nagbabayad, yung iba, hindi rin. Hindi rin pare-pare. Dipindi po sa, ano, sa police o sundalo, yung iba kasi nagbabayad, yung iba naman hindi. Yung ayan na lang namin. Kasi ano lang nila sa amin na pag mga sundalo o polis ang nakasakay sa ganito pag publiko, din namin siya nisi. However, LTFRB Chairman Martin Dalgra explained that not charging fares on the members of the police, armed forces, and coast guard has been an unwritten rule by the bus operators as a sign of giving due courtesy to these men in uniform. Dalgra clarified that they only formalized the system, but it is still up to the operators if they will impose fair charges on the uniformed personnel. I talked to some of the bus operators, they were already saying that actually nagbibigay na kami ng mga tinatawag na seasons pass. We kind of formalized what has already been, what's happening on the ground in some of the places. Joan Nano, UNTV News and Rescue, Quezon City. After last week's rollback, oil companies are set to impose a price hike on petroleum products this week. 
oil industry players estimate a 90 to a 90 to 95 centavos per liter increase for gasoline while 50 to 55 centavos per liter increase for diesel also there will be an 80 to 90 centavos per liter hike for kerosene meanwhile a large percentage of gasoline stations in the country have already implemented the oil excise tax in relation to the oil price hike senator bam aquino called once again on president rodrigo duterte to suspend the implementation of the oil excise tax the department of transportation is in the final stages of finalizing the draft implementing rules and regulations for a proposed law that would legalize motorcycle taxis grace Cassin tells us why the House of Representatives recently passed on third and final reading a bill that will allow motorcycles to be used as public utility vehicles. The Senate is yet to approve its version of the bill, but the Department of Transportation has already started drafting its implementing rules and regulations. According to DOTR Road Transport and Infrastructure Under Secretary Mark De Leon, they are now in the final stages of finalizing the draft IRR which includes the motorcycle taxi's allowable speed limit, insurance, driver's training, and identification of routes. Admittedly, yung uh, third meeting then, if finalize namin yung IRR, medyo kailangan lang i-refine yung uh, mga clauses dun sa IRR. But the House Committee on Metro Manila Development wants the agency to fast-track the process, as well as issue a department order for its pilot testing in Metro Manila. However, LTFRB said they are only allowed to do what the law states. Because if we wait for the bill, we will have to wait for the next Congress, file it, refile it, eh matatagalan tayo masyado. We are legally bound by that Section 7, which says that uh, private motorcycles uh, are not a mode of public land transportation. Meanwhile, the management of motorcycle hailing service Angkas app has expressed willingness to join the said pilot testing. We really submit po that we can use ANCAS no, as a test case to see if these regulations are really um, working for you know the, the common good. Grace Cassin, UNTV News and Rescue, House of Representatives. The Philippine National Police wants to deport the Chinese national who threw a cup of taho or soya pudding at a police officer in an MRT station. However, Malacanang believes that the incident is an isolated case and should not be made into a bigger issue. Robbie de Guzman tells us why. Malacanang called on foreign nationals visiting the Philippines to follow the country's laws and regulations. The reminder comes on the heels of the arrest of a female Chinese national who threw her cup of taho or soya pudding at a police officer on duty at the MRT Bonnie station after she was prohibited from bringing it inside the train. The palace believes that the incident is an isolated case and must not be made into a bigger issue since appropriate charges have already been filed against the woman. Zhang was charged with unjust vexation, direct assault, and disobedience to the person in authority in Mandaluyong City Prosecutor's Office last Sunday. Foreign nationals who sojourn in this country should always behave, otherwise they're subject to loss and deportation. We will not allow them to disrespect authorities or violate any law or ordinance in this country. But National Capital Region Police Office Director Guillermo Eliazar is determined to call for Zhang's deportation for disrespecting a person in authority. We can uh, recommend uh, for her to be considered as an uh, undesirable alien so that the Bureau of Immigration can process this. Eliazar said such action is unacceptable, especially towards an officer who was just doing his job. PNP Chief Director General Oscar Albayalde, meanwhile, conferred PO1 William Cristobal the Medal of Commendation for his exemplary action during the incident. Yung uh, asal kasi yung kanyang uh, ano is worthy of emulation ng atin. Ito yung na highlight natin na one good deed no, one commendable act yung ginawa niya. Robbie De Guzman, UNTV News and Rescue. A lawmaker ensures to scrutinize the implementation of infrastructure projects this year that will be funded with the alleged pork barrel 
inserted in the 2019 proposed national budget. Nel Maribohok will tell us why. The battle on pork barrel issues is far from over. This although the Congress has ratified the 3.75 trillion peso proposed budget without successfully subtracting the alleged pork insertions in it. For Senator Panfilo Lacson, there's still a need to scrutinize the implementation of the government's infrastructure projects which will be funded through the alleged pork barrel of several lawmakers. Senator Lacson said that once the signed 2019 General Appropriations Bill is returned to Congress, they will immediately peruse it. Pagka inapprove ng Pangulo at pinadala yung kopya sa, sa amin, both houses, makikita namin yun. In the same manner na yung 2018 budget, yung diba, pinadilid ko doon na 50.8 billion and na-restore. Pero sa oversight, uh, nakita rin naman ninyo lahat na hindi na-implement ang baba ng physical accomplishment. Yun na sinasabi natin. Importante rin yung role ng, ng Congress na sa oversight. Senator Lacson wanted to amend and delete from the 3.75 trillion peso 2019 proposed budget the 160 million peso allocated for the projects of every member of the lower house, among which the 120 million pesos for road development and flood control projects and 40 million pesos for textbook and scholarship programs for students. Senator Lacson also stated that several fellow senators added 23 to 25 billion pesos in their budgets which he believes are pork insertions. The said amount is allocated for flood control projects, right-of-way, water treatment and feasibility study in some provinces. Senator Lacson also questions why there are such items when the Department of Public Works and Highways or DPWH has the same projects and funds. On the other hand, the 75 billion peso fund the budget department allotted for the DPWH has already been realigned. The said amount had allegedly been offered to local contractors with corresponding commissions or kickbacks of 10 to 20 percent per project. The Department of Budget and Management or DBM had earlier defended the proposed budget saying that it had undergone the right process as well as consultations. Meanwhile, several lawmakers continue to question the pork battle not only because of the Supreme Court ruling but also because it is used in politicking. Several politicians are also believe it gained more through commissions and kickbacks from their projects. Malacanang, for its part, guarantees to carefully examine the ratified 2019 proposed budget. Yung sinasabing insertion, dati nang nandun yun na niredistribute lang. Number two, kailan piperman? Eh, de, malapit na siguro yun kung eh, di ba gusto ni Presidente nga na ma-approve. So, it will be signed as a matter of course. But, the President, as we said, will be scrutinizing every phase, every provision of the budget. He, he wants to be sure that it is in conformity with the Constitution. Mm -hmm. And he will veto anything that he feels is not correct mm -hmm. or irregular. Nel Maribuho, UNTV News and Rescue, Senate of the Philippines. The Commission on Elections, sitting as the National Plebiscite Board of Canvassers, will reconvene on Tuesday to, de to decide on the canvas votes from the February 6 Bangsamoro Organic Law Plebiscite. The board received earlier the certificates of canvas from the six towns in uh, Lanao del Norte and 67 barangays in North Cotabato who voted on whether to be included or not in the new Bangsamoro region. Comelec Chairman Sheriff Abbas says the board decided to reconvene tomorrow as only 20% of the plebiscite votes were tabulated after the canvassing. The board will come out with a final decision based on the double majority votes of the areas that participated in the plebiscite for inclusion. Two-time champion AFP Cavaliers is heading to the finals of the UNTV Cup Season 7 after knocking out the NHA Builders in the best of three semifinals series. Meanwhile, Season 6 champion Senate Defenders will face off with the PNP Responders anew in a do-or-die game. Victor Casare will tell us why.
The AFP Cavaliers remained as the top seed after it battled NHA Builders at the best of three series in the UNTV Cup Season 7 semifinals held in Pasig City Sports Center. The AFP is now heading to the finals of the charity game organized by UNTV after knocking out NHA 86-78. Darwin Cordero and Wilfred Casulla led the Cavaliers to victory by firing a combined 47 points. AFP head coach Corporal Cornelio Sani Manukat III attributed their latest win to teamwork and determination to claim this season's title. Hard work. Uh, pinaghirapan talaga ng team to. We really focus on winning the semifinals. We really practice hard. Uh, marami kami preparation. Yun, we're happy uh, nagawa namin lahat. The Cavaliers also admitted that they had a hard time blocking NHA's transition offense plays but were able to overcome it after the builders committed a series of errors. Wala na, wala sa composure ng mga player ko. Medyo napagod eh. Inabot pa kami ng sobrang mahala sa three points. Di makashoot, di makanaagawan. So, all in all, now we're in composure. Now we're in composure. This is AFB's third time to go into the final playing date after winning the title in seasons two and four. Season 6 champion Senate defenders and PNP responders, meanwhile, are in a do or die situation after the latter sustained a beating from Senate Kagers 74 69. Reynaldo Malaga Jr. and James Ryan Mangaran were hailed as the best players of the game after firing 30 and 70 points, respectively. The Senate capitalized on its tight defense plays to force a Game 3 against the PNP and keep their chances in defending their crown alive. Oh, we, we played the uh, good interior defense. No? Uh, yung mga penetration nila na uh, check namin. And then, uh, kasi naman, we cannot stop naman umiping eh. What we can do is contain him lang. So, I think we were able to contain him and then uh, the rest ng mga players nila, uh, hindi naman namin napakontribute. So that's why siguro uh, we got lucky in the end. Pinakalapses namin is ang baba ng field goals namin, especially sa labas. So siguro kailangan pa namin mag-practice ng shooting sa labas and the same thing, kailangan talaga namin improve pa ng depensa namin. The Game 3 winner will clash with the AFB Cavaliers in the UNTV Cup Season 7 Finals. Victor Posare, UNTV News and Rescue. Philippines. Wish Covery Season 2 Grand Finalist Jamie Picardal wows the crowd during his mini concert in Dagupan City, Pangasinan. His Wish Cover and mentor hit maker Rani Raimundo believes that Jamie will one day make it big in the Philippine music industry. Mirasol Abogadil tells us why. Wish Covery Season 2 finalist Jemmy Picardal stunned the crowd when he performed during his mini home concert in Dagupan City, Pangasinan on Sunday night. <laughs> His soulful timber and unique singing style, Jemmy proved to his fellow Pangasinan folks that he has what it takes to win the Wishcovery Season 2, the singer and the song. Jemmy will represent Camp Rani Raimundo to the grand finals of the first and biggest online singing competition in the Philippines set to be held on February 26 at the Smart Araneta Coliseum. During the mini-concert held at the Dagupan City Plaza, Jemmy couldn't help but feel emotional for the overwhelming support he received from his family, friends, and fans. The young artist also expressed gratitude for those who continue to believe in him and helped him overcome challenges to reach the competition finals. Parang hindi pa po mag-sing in, ganun. Pero sobrang saya, sobrang worth it. Lahat po ng paghihirap, lahat po ng pagsasumikap ko sa musika ay parang nasusuklian po. Parang I'm living my dreams right now. 
Jemmy Swish cover and mentor. Filipino hitmaker Rani Raimundo believes that the young artist's unique singing voice and style, coupled with his tenacity and determination, will help him make it big in the Philippine music industry one day. Ang OPM ang isang sining na minamahal natin lahat. Uh, panahon na makarinig ng bagong tunog at bagong artist. At yan ang nakita ko kay Jemmy Picardal. Si Jemmy, unang hirit pa rin ng boses. Pagdating ng panahon, alam mo si Jemmy Picardal ka agad yun. Pangalawa, alam niya ang gusto niya. Alam niya direksyon niya. Kilala niya sarili niya. At ang pinakamahalaga sa lahat, napakabait na bata. Jemmy's friends and fans likewise believe that the young musician will fulfill his dreams of becoming a professional singer. We are very proud. Buong Malasiki National High School talagang proud kami sa kanya. And we will try our best to, to support lahat ng mga ano, kailangan ni Jemmy. Talagang ano, susuportahan namin siya all the way. Pagkanta and yung passion namin, ang passion niya sa pagkanta is nakita na lang namin. And we're so happy and glad na Galingan mo, then have faith in God para kasi si God talaga magpupush sa'yo, i-lift up ka niya. So mananalo, mananalo ka, pag sa'yo talaga to, magiging sa'yo to. Kaya God bless Jemmy. We support you from LSF Meanwhile, Camp Junji Marcelo's Rhea Basco will hold her mini home concert in Taguig City tonight. Mirasol Abugadil, UNTV News and Rescue. Up next on Y News, a group of U.S. citizens demonstrate for wall while migrants wait on the U.S. border. And a life-size Formula One Lego car fetches $108,000 U.S. dollars at a Paris auction. And those are the reasons behind the stories in the second part of our newscast. Y News returns with William Theo. I'm Angelo Castro III. Good evening.